Hi, we're just hanging out with Tori and talking wrestling, actually. Imagine that. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Tori's Talk Wrestling. In today's episode, we are ranking our top five coolest wrestling attires of all time. So, this is including specialty outfits like at WrestleManias and just normal attires, too. Your honorable mention is... I have two of them. Number one is Axe Smash and Crush Demolition. They'd axe them down and smash them. And crush them. It was like a Mad Max Thunderdome get up. Mm-hmm. Let's just leave it called that. Yep. Uh, but it looked cool because it was different and good, as Mr. Dan Housen says. Demolition Crunch? Mm-hmm. Yes, Demolition Crunch. My first honorable mention is Jeff Hardy. He has face paint and he has those cool, like, fi- finger glove things. My second honorable mention has to do with Vince McMahon trying to almost embarrass someone. But he made it work for him, brother. And that's the polka dotted American Dream Dusty Rose. Rocking and rolling, strutting and strolling with the yellow polka dot, baby. <laughs> Wine and die with kings and queens. And, and I flopped on alleys with polka and beans. Yeah. I know how times, baby. <laughs> and then my final honorable mention is Kane. Not just like 2010's Kane. I mean, like, with the mask. With the whole suit, with the whole thing, not just So, like, do you like the suit that had one arm covered? Mm-hmm. I do, too. I preferred that over... I don't think he preferred it, but... Yeah. But, yeah, I definitely thought whenever they lost the mask, it was very lacking. It's an evolving of a character, though. I yeah. As we get into our top five, my number five is a guy who would clip, clip, clip that hair. Mr. Brutus the Barber Beefcake. And his getup was always like, uh, like his pants always looked like someone took some shears to him. That was the, the point of it. Was it was uh, his suit always looked cut up because he's a barber, cutting hair. Nothing terrifies people as bad as a barber. With those hedge clippers, yeah. oddly yeah. enough, he never used those to cut hair with. You know that probably would be scary to me with hedge clippers because I'd be like, "Oops, just cut off your finger, sorry." Oop, you just lost an ear. My number five is Miss Charlotte Flair. And I picked her instead of Ric Flair because I wanted to include someone with the robe, and obviously she has that. But also she has, like, these, like, I don't want to say bedazzled, but, like, bejeweled tops, I guess. So that's kind of cool. Well, also the peacock thing was Mm -hmm. really cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, everybody knows that Ric Flair has the greatest robes of all time. So we didn't even put him on this list because that's a given. My number four. Oh, yeah, brother. Snap into a Slim Jim. <laughs> and Macho Man Randy Savage. All these different get-ups with the cowboy hats and the different jackets and the fringe. And then he went to the NWO Macho Man with the do-rag and <laughs> the fringe. And, and we aren't even including Bonesaw. Bonesaw, hard. get back here, Spider-Man. <laughs> And then you had his look whenever he was with uh, Miss Liz, and he had mm-hmm. the sequin robes. Yeah. I mean, he had an onslaught of good looks. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. mean, like, handsome. I mean, like, yeah. good. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think someone has some feelings for the macho man. Miss <laughs> Elizabeth did. Now, my number four is someone that you guys know, and that you know that I like, and that's The Undertaker. And Dad is like, oh, you stole it from me. Because you have the cool hat, you got the cool robe, and, you I mean, obviously the entrance is pretty cool, too. Well, let me that's ask... that's not really the point, but, yeah. Let me ask you this. hmm What era of Undertaker outfit is your favorite? Original? No. Uh, I would say, like... Ministry of Darkness? Mm-mm. Like, the one that he's The most, biker? No. After that, like, the... When he came when he came back as the dead man. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's probably... Uh, that's maybe mine. I, I thought the Ministry of Darkness look was pretty cool, too. I even mm-hmm. found some pictures with the bat wings. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's kind of cool look. Yeah. And before we go any farther, I want to point something out to you. There is a... Now, you'll notice I grew up a WCW Mid-South mm-hmm. Dallas fan. I watched WWF when it was on, yeah. But you'll notice that pretty much this whole list, except for like one or two, is all WWF. Mm-hmm. Because they had an idea that no other company had, and that is merchandising. 
it's hard to merchandise just someone in black trunks and black boots. Mm -hmm. So you'll notice a lot of these attires and outfits are all WWF. My number three. Oh, what a rush! The Road Warriors would come out wearing those shoulder pads with the spikes on them. And they didn't get to do it in WMF because of the violence code. But in WCW, a couple times they'd take those spikes and screw, screw them off of the pad and use them as a weapon. In fact, one time, they got the American Dream Dusty Rose in the eye. And he's laying there, oh man, my eye. My eyeball don't be poked out by the Road Warriors. And he had to come back get his revenge on Animal and Hawk. So they used their attire not only as a threatening appearance, but as a weapon. Props to you, Animal and Hawk. Mm -hmm. So you could tell from that clip I just did um, a great actress. Yeah, good job. Ah. <laughs> now my number three is only a specific era of this character. Even though I like the other eras, don't get me wrong. But this era's attire stands out the most. And that's Bray Wyatt as the Fiend. I mean, I could definitely tell that this was very much inspired by It, by Stephen King, uh, the Pennywise character. You got the striped pants, you got the weird mask with the same coloring, and yeah, you get it even though you've never seen it. <laughs> but I've seen you know, The Fiend. You've never seen It. <laughs> but anyway, I just thought that it was very cool and more inspired. And they even did the clown nose at one point, too. That's yeah. true. Forgot about that. But I, I think it just adds more to the character. So what is your number two? My number two is Simply Ravishing and Rick Rude, baby. And he would always have those airbrush trunks. And my favorite one is when he was going against Jake the Snake. And he put Jake the Snake's wife's face on his crotch <laughs> of his pants. <laughs> and saying that Oh, Jake, she might love you, but she lusts after ravishing Rick Rude. That's gross. What I'd like to have right now <laughs> is for all you fat, out of shape, inner city sweat hogs, keep the noise down while I take my robe off and show the ladies what a real man's supposed to look like. <laughs> Hit my music. Oh, boy. <laughs> Calm down. You're getting a little too into it. <laughs> And that's so... How did they show that on TV? He was simply ravishing. What is your number two? <laughs> My number two is Triple H. And you might think, Triple H, what? However, this is only one attire of his. And that's the Terminator attire from WrestleMania. It's so cool looking. I mean, you guys know the Terminator. She's my favorite movie, so I'm pretty partial. But I still like it, and it's my list. And that's how I'm going to do it. My favorite Triple H attire is actually he wore white trunks and white boots one time. Uh, it's bugging me. I can't remember when it is. I'm sure somebody will comment on there when it was. But it was it just, he always wore black everything. And then, like, for one night at a pay for you, he wore white. And I was like, that looks really cool. Mm -hmm. So, before we get into our number one, speaking of attire, where did you get that <laughs> lovely T-shirt? I got this at bonfire.com where you can look up all my merchandise for all my channels towards everything, towards Hulk Wrestling, and towards his edits. So, all three in one place? Yes, and if you look up Role Model Production, then you can get one shirt that includes all the channels. Whoa, are you serious? So go find your best wrestling attire ever at bonfire.com, linked in the description. <laughs> now we're on to our numero uno. My numero uno, a lot of people out there might not know I'm a big fan of this person because I rarely ever mention him on any of my countdowns. Mm -hmm. But for the greatest attire, this person bought jumpsuits made by Tony Alamo, not yeah. knowing that they were being made by children children and child labor. Yeah. But the cool jumpsuits, cool wrestling get up, and the only person that Elvis ever ripped off. <laughs> And that's all you don't man, brother. I got my long side bones, got my head slid back, coming to your town in a pink cat like I'm just a honky tonk man. Honky tonk man. I'm a honky tonk man. Honky tonk man. I'm the honky tonk man. I'm cool, I'm cocky, and I'm bad. Woo! That's lame. His jumpsuits, he paid like over ten thousand dollars a piece for those children to make those. <laughs> it's just Did I mean, he ever know that those kids no. made that? 
Nobody knew. He the same guy used to make clothes for Michael Jackson and. Mm-hmm. So it, he passed away before they found out. He went to prison. Tony Alamo. No, did the Honky Tonk Man? No, he's still away? alive. Oh, so he. Knows. He's still strutting and strolling, rocking and rolling. All right, my point is, is now he knows children make his suit. Yes. Okay. Yeah, he doesn't buy from him anymore. <laughs> He's not a monster. <laughs> He's just the greatest and continental champion of all the time. Now, my number one is very predictable, and it's Sting, like the crow Sting. Surfer Sting, right? No, the crow. The crow Sting. <laughs> but, I mean, you guys know that Sting's my favorite, and Core's my favorite, and you combine both, and it's the best thing ever. So, yeah. So, and do you know who came up with the idea for Sting to do the crow? Who? Hey, yo. Sting was looking for a new look. Mm-hmm. New, he's been growing his hair out, and Scott Hall's like, Hey, have you ever seen The Crow? And Sting's like, Nope. And he goes, <laughs> Well, you should do The Crow. It's pretty cool. <laughs> That's pretty cool because, I mean, Razor Ramon's gimmick was kind of based off Scarface, too. No, that was based on Razor Ramon. It's based on Scarface. Scarface ripped off Razor Ramon. No, it did not. <laughs> Do you think everybody ripped off wrestlers? Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Have you ever heard of Elvis before the Honky Tonk Man? I think not. <laughs> <laughs> he totally wasn't a generational icon. Honky Tonk Man? I agree. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, definitely comment who you think has the best wrestling attire. Go to the description below to check out my other two channels. And my merch store, where you can get this awesome attire. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Bye! Yeah. Yeah. Hey everybody, this is The Stinger here with Tori, and if you haven't figured it out yet, Tori does everything. This is proof positive. It's showtime in Tori's world every day. Why? Because she does everything. It's showtime. And Tori now has merch. Go check it out at bonfire.com. Link in the description and under the About tab. Bye!